The Dallas Stars are Central Division champs once again. Who is your Dallas Stars MVP for this season? And an update down on the farm. That's next on Locked on Stars. Your Locked on Stars, your daily podcast on the Dallas Stars. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Howdy, Stars fans, and welcome back to another episode of Locked On Stars, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every single day. It's a pleasure to be with you. I'm Joey Erickson, former producer of 105 Through the Fan. Please be sure to subscribe. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube. And as always, thank you so much for making us a part of your day and making us your first listen. Happy Monday, Stars fans, and welcome back to another week of Locked On Stars. And the Dallas Stars are Central Division champs. Baby, I apologize for my appearance here today. For those of you watching on YouTube, staying at a friend's house this weekend. Shout out Blake Tyson. We went and played some golf. I came back. I'm ready to record. So I look like a giant mess, but I know you're not watching for my appearance. You're ready for another episode of Locked on Stars. So appreciate you joining us here this week. And the playoffs are right around the corner. Can you believe it? We're less than a week away from round one of the Stanley Cup playoffs. And who knows who the Dallas Stars are going to play. But we do know they are Central Division champs after defeating the Kraken over the weekend. We'll talk about that a bit. I also want to get your pick for the MVP of this season for the Dallas Stars. I think there's three or four candidates you could throw out there. Let me know in the comment section below, and we'll update you on the Texas Stars as well, who are getting ready for their playoffs. So a lot, a lot going on here recently, but of course, we're gearing up for the first round in just a few days. Today's episode is brought to you by Sleeper. Download the Sleeper app and use promo code LOCKEDONNHL to get up to $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. See Sleeper's terms of use for details. So the Dallas Stars are Central Division champs for the first time since 2015-16 after defeating the Seattle Kraken over the weekend by a final score of 3-1, to one, which guarantees them home ice advantage for the first two rounds. They still have the ability to win the Western Conference, which will give them home ice advantage throughout the entirety of the first three rounds who knows what happens in the Stanley Cup final if they got there but of course they would love to win the Western Conference as well so there's a a few ways that can happen on Tuesday so tomorrow the Vancouver Canucks are taking on the Calgary Flames and I want to say if the Flames win in any fashion the Stars would wrap up the Western Conference otherwise The Stars would have to win their finale against the St. Louis Blues on Wednesday, and uh, they would end up wrapping up the Western Conference as well. They just need a point, I should say. They would just have to pick up a point against the Blues. So that should be more than manageable, but the Stars are 51-21-9 on the season, 111 points, which, uh, of course, is uh, a bit more than their total last season. Winnipeg and Colorado are already playing each other in the first round. That is definitely set. What is not set is who the Dallas Stars are going to play. So there is a few scenarios. Vegas is probably the likely opponent. They have 96 points. They trail Nashville by three as we speak, and Vegas has one game in hand. Plus, they are just one point behind the LA Kings, which is another possibility. So it's not even just Nashville or LA or Vegas for that matter. There's a a few different scenarios uh, that could happen. So Vegas could end up jumping LA and then LA would jump back to the second wild card if Dallas wins the Western Conference, of course. So there's still a, a lot at stake as we speak. But Dallas, I think, likely is going to play Vegas. But that's hard to say with L.A. still just clinging on to that third spot in the Pacific Division. So really, the only movement we're going to see is probably within the Pacific. So whoever wins the third seed in the Pacific will uh, bump out the... uh, bump out that Pacific team down to wildcard two, more than likely, depending on on how Nashville does in their finale as well. So (laughs) there's still uh, a lot going on, but um, interesting, interesting stuff. More importantly, the Dallas Stars pick up a big win 
on Saturday over the Seattle Kraken. They win three to one. And what I really want to get to about that game is just the best players for the Dallas Stars playing the best or being the best players, right? You need your best players to be at their best in the Stanley Cup playoffs. We've had that gripe about Jason Robertson in the past few years where it seems like his game hasn't translated as much to the Stanley Cup playoffs. He did come on in that series against Seattle, played better against Vegas, but that first round wasn't great. But I've always had the the take about him as well, where he can be so effective even when he's not scoring. Teams have to account for number 21, especially on the power play. And good to see him just being a lethal shooter against the crack in the other night. He was excellent in the contest. So was Miro Haskinen. You need your number one defenseman to show that ability where he's the best player on the ice. And, and Miro was phenomenal, a three-point night for him. But Robertson, Miro, and Harley graded out the best for the Dallas Stars in that 3-1 to one win. They were just so excellent, and they continue to be productive. They continue to be effective, and that's a trickle-down effect to the second and third and fourth line, which we all know is the best depth we've seen with the Dallas Stars in years, and they're built for hockey at this time of year. This is exactly where we expected the Dallas Stars to be Four months ago, it's been tops and turvy. It's been an emotional roller coaster at some points, but at the end of the day, the Stars have won the Central Division. And that's what we sort of expected. We expected them to be within the top three, and they have been all season long. And they've gone on a great run here over the past month or so, albeit the schedule is not very hard, but they took care of business. They win the Central Division. And Pete DeBoer has mentioned it so many times throughout his tenure with the Stars. He wants to win the division. He wants to win the conference, the president's trophy, whatever, because it guarantees you, guarantees you home ice advantage. It guarantees you game seven on your home ice. Who knows if the Stars get through Seattle last year playing a game seven on the road. Home ice advantage is not what it used to be, albeit I, I think teams are, are about 50% and maybe even less than that over the last few years. But game sevens at home are different. Game sevens are, are different than game one. And we all know that. That's why it's so important and so coveted to have that last game on home ice in front of your home fans, the phenomenal fans at the American Airlines Center. The place has been buzzing this year. That's another thing I feel like I want to kind of go down a, a bit of a, 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 a sidetrack here and just talk about the wonderful crowds that have been in attendance at the American Airlines Center this season. They've been treated to some wonderful hockey. <laughs> and um, it, it just, it, the building has so much buzz in it and can't wait for the Stanley Cup playoffs to return. It, it truly is phenomenal, the love and support that um, they get at this time of year, especially when they're rolling like this. And it's been a while since the Stars have been like the team in the Western Conference. It may not feel like that to the rest of the league, but around here in the Metroplex, it just feels like, yeah, they're, they're ready to go. The Mavs are playing great. I, I mean, Dallas sports in general have been blessed. Sports fans have been blessed with what <laughs> we are witnessing here over the last year or so. The Cowboys are going to be the Cowboys, okay? I don't mean to throw shots at them, but it's the it's the same stuff every single year. <laughs> Mostly, we, we can be honest about that. And the Stars for a long time, for a long time, were pretty mediocre. I, I think we can be honest about that. They're, you know, just kind of hovering around 500, trying to get into the dance. Well, they're they're in the dance. They're in the dance, and they're ready to do some damage and cannot wait. But to, to get back to the main point of the best players for the Dallas Stars playing their best, Miro Haskinen, Thomas Harley, Jason Robertson, Rope Hentz, all playing some of their best hockey at the right time. 
to be completely honest, the entire team has. Jake Ottinger has heated up. He's looked so good. So, so good. He's not even the same goaltender we saw two months ago, three months ago, especially pre-injury or post-injury, whatever you want to call it. He's just been so, so good. He's tidy with his rebounds. He just has that swagger, the aura around him where you can just see it. it. It's kind of an eye test with him sometimes where, okay, yeah, you're not getting more than two tonight. Good luck. I know my offense is going to get three, probably going to get four. So you're going to have to to do your best to get three pucks past me in order to win. And, and lately, that just has not been the case. Stars are closing out games against good opponents. They seem to have their lineup in order. We all know the, the four trios are going to stay. Uh, probably stayed the same. We'll see what happens when Dodonov returns to the lineup. But at this point, why why break up what um what hasn't um what hasn't hurt you? It, it's it's been a a true true incredible run here in the last month, and uh, it, it's still not over. Of course, the the questions with this team lie now. They lie in five days when the Stanley Cup playoffs begin on April 20th. And I am super pumped. Stars are Central Division champs, first time since 2015-2016. And it just feels so much different. So much different. That team was sort of a, a lightning in the bottle. They, they got really good goaltending from from. Kari. Well, I wouldn't say really good goaltending. They got okay goaltending, and they just scored the lights out. <laughs> um, I don't think everyone expected um, the, the Stars to score as much as they did. The issue was they couldn't stop anybody in the, in the Lindy Ruff era. <laughs> they, they really struggled to uh, to stop opposing offenses, but they, they could score with the best of them. That's for sure. And the team is just a totally different makeup with, with the young talent they have. And of course you have your veterans. It's just, it feels like it's all coming together. It really does. And the first round will be huge, especially if you play Vegas. I mean, the storylines are endless there. Revenge in the first round, a Vegas team that is using the cap situation to their advantage once again. Mark Stone miraculously has recovered. <laughs> um, what are they going to look like? Because they've been they've been pretty meh, to, to be honest, down the stretch. But does it matter? I don't think it does. They... They were kind of mad down the stretch last season, and no one really talked about them. And then they just ran through everybody. <laughs> they were uh, they were really good. Obviously, they were they were they were really good. So I'm very intrigued to see what happens in the next few days, and we solidify some of these first round matchups. All right, that's it about the Central Division champs. It really doesn't matter at the end of the day. <laughs> it's nice. It's nice to to add it to the resume, but Stanley Cup is what they're really after. But my question for you here today, who is your Dallas Stars MVP of this season? Maybe three or four candidates. Please let me know your answer in the comment section below. I'll tell you mine in just a moment. Today's episode of Locked on Stars is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. They have it at e eBay Motors. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has, has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusion supply. eBay Guaranteed Fit only available to you. S customers. So who is your Dallas stars MVP this season? And it feels like it could be a multitude of guys, but you can only pick one. Okay. Locked on stars fans. So give me your answer below in the comment section. Play along with me. I'll throw out there. Some of the candidates I feel are deserving 
of this award. Matt Duchesne, I would throw in there, especially for the first three to four months of the season. All the highlight reel plays he was producing, all the big-time goals, not just big-time goals, game-winning goals. He jumps right in. He fit right in and is the best free agent signing of the offseason. There. I said it. I'll always say it. I think he deserves to have some looks at the MVP for this season. I think you could throw Scott Wedgwood in there. Wedgwood had to step into a role that he, he had not been in for really a, a lot of his career when Jake Ottinger went down. And without the play of Scott Wedgwood, who knows if the Stars win the Central Division this season? Who knows? They could have really took a turn for the worse when they still had a lot of questions revolving around their defense. Scott Wedgwood came up big and played lights out for about a month. <laughs> like some some really phenomenal stuff. And he has some of his best numbers in his career. I, I think Wedgwood could be thrown in there. Uh, Thomas Hartley is someone I would also throw in there. With Miro going down, his ability to elevate his play. He's really, really close to the 50-point mark. Not a lot of people saw him uh, reaching that. And just his, his ability and improvement from, from last season is remarkable to truly make him an elite defender and a top pairing defenseman for decades, for a decade at least, <laughs> along with, with Miro Haskinen. Um, I, I think he could be thrown in the conversation. And, and, and Jason Robertson is also someone, just based off, he, he leads the team in scoring about a point-per-game player. Um, hasn't flashed, hasn't had those moments that we've seen in years past. And that's where I give the edge to my MVP, and it would be Wyatt Johnston. And maybe it's it's a bit of recency bias. It, it absolutely is to some degree because he's been on a complete tear. But the way Wyatt Johnston has straight up taken over games cannot be denied. He has taken over games where I, I sit there and think he's the best player on the ice against Edmonton even with, with McDavid on the ice. And this is not a knock against McDavid. He's the best player on the planet. But the Stars shut down 97, and I'm watching, and why Johnson looks like the best player on the sheet for, for long stretches. You look at the game against San Jose, and he said, we will not lose to the Sharks. I will put the team on our back, along with the new kid, Logan Stanko, and we are going to bring this team a victory. He just has had those moments on top of reaching 30 goals for the first time in his career. He's up to 32. He's got 65 points. That's without playing on the top power play unit, right? He doesn't even get a ton of time on the power play because he's on that second unit. And his numbers have been phenomenal, but just more importantly, when you watch him, he just seems like the best player on the ice for, for lots, for lots of stretches <laughs> during Stars games, especially in the last month or so. But you look back at, at the start he had too, and all these numbers come with sort of a caveat where didn't he have two goals in like a 20-game span at one point? There, there was a little bit of that slump, and you're like, Okay, maybe maybe it's catching up to him a bit, and that that has not been the case. He he has come out with a vengeance, and I I honestly feel is is he a top twenty player in the game? And again, this could be recency bias, and maybe I'm being overzealous about his play because I'm so just tunnel vision into the Dallas Stars most of the time. I think that conversation is he's an elite, elite center iceman. And for my money, he he's the Dallas Stars MVP this season. Certainly the most improved. Maybe Harley has has something to has something to argue about that, but 
I think he's just he's done so much and he's been so spectacular. Uh, Johnson would be my MVP. Would love to hear your answers. I, I think there's a multitude of them, which is a great thing because the stars have gotten help from everybody. There really hasn't been a true clear cut MVP like Jason Robertson was last season with, of course, producing over 100 points and really the year before with um, his goal total. There hasn't been that clear cut guy. They just, they've kind of had three different MVPs throughout the season is what it, what it is what it more feels like, but you have to give me one answer. Okay. That would be cheating. That'd be copping out. We don't cop out here on locked on stars. So give me an answer. I'm going with Wyatt Johnston this season. That's my, my final answer on the Dallas stars MVP. If you asked me four months ago, three months, I, I think I would have said Matt Duchesne because he was looking like, um, looking like the X factor for the Dallas star. And he, and he still could be very well could be the X factor when these uh, playoffs roll around. Can't wait to see him in Stanley cup playoff form. Oh, the Dallas stars are so deep and um, they're ready to, they're ready to roll. All righty. That's it for that segment. One more. We're going down on the farm. The Texas stars are gearing up for uh, their playoff run of their own. Figured we uh, do a little update with them. It's been a while since we, uh, we took a look at the Texas stars. We did see Maverick Bork not too long ago. Of course, his stay was not long, but Uh, Texas stars are still finding a way to get the job done, even without their at what at one time was the leading score in the American hockey league in Logan Stancomb. We'll do that in just a moment. Today's episode of locked on stars is also brought to you by sleeper. We're right around the corner to the Stanley cup playoff stars fans and the Dallas stars are central division champs, but that doesn't matter because I need to remind you about winning and playing big with Daily Fantasy Hockey on Sleeper, the official Daily Fantasy app of the Locked On NHL Network. Sleeper is our number one choice for Daily Fantasy Sports, and especially Daily Fantasy Hockey. Because with Sleeper, you can win 100 times your cash in Daily Fantasy Hockey contests. All you have to do is pick the studs of the National Hockey League. You have your Ovechkins. You have your McDavid's and McKinnon's. Pick more or less on certain sleeper projections for things like goals, assists, even saves, plus minus in a given game, and you could win 100 times your bet on sleeper if you correctly predict the outcome of eight player stats. And you can win 100 times your bet, Stars fans. You heard me correctly. So go ahead, start paying attention, nail those picks, and you can start winning big. Use promo code Locked On NHL. You'll get up to $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That's code Locked On NHL. See Sleeper's terms of use for details and location availability. So the Texas Stars are finding themselves in the fourth spot in the central division and they have clinched their playoff spots in the American Hockey League they are 33 31 and 6 and they have 72 points they trail Rockford Grand Rapids and Milwaukee and if you remember Milwaukee went on an incredible winning streak about uh, midway through the year and uh, they really took advantage and uh, have uh, clinched the uh, central division this season. The Texas stars are five, five, five and five, I should say in their last 10. And of course they, they did have a dip uh, in play with, without Logan Stan Coven <laughs> in the lineup who wouldn't, of course, at the time he was the leading scorer in the AHL, but Maverick Bork has picked up right where he left off. Of course, we saw him a few weeks ago, 26 goals and 49.75 points this season in 69 games. He has been phenomenal for uh, the Texas Stars. And also Matei Blumel, who has a a contract that is upcoming here in the offseason. Do they want to keep him around? And who who knows? Uh, Blumel, of course, has gotten some time with the Dallas Stars in years past. He's up to the 30-goal mark this season. Had a huge game the other night. He scored both uh, both goals in a uh, 2-1 overtime victory uh, for the Texas Stars. He's had a really, really good season. And I've always been very bullish on Blue Mel. I, I like the way he plays. I, I don't think he's a Maverick Bork or Stan Coven top six type forward, but 
I think he will be a great depth piece, sort of a, a fourth line um, type of a, a four that has some skill in his game, sort of uh, like, like a Ty Delandria, where I think the best role for him may be in that fourth line situation. Of course, he was a, a fourth round pick in 2019 by the Edmonton Oilers um, and, and just has really really improved this season. He had 19 goals last year. He's up to the 30 goal mark. Uh, and it, it looks like the stars may have a, another good one here in, in blue Mel. He's riding a little uh, point streak as well here down the stretch. He uh, has a point in four straight games, uh, three in his last four. Um, always have, have really liked his play because he just, he plays kind of simple and he, he, he does have similar, I should say, I guess almost a style of game of someone like a Stan Coven where it's not overly flashy a whole lot. They just, they just play really hard and that's, that's all you can ask for <laughs> most of the time, especially from your, your young prospects. They play hard. They're responsible in their defensive zone. And yes, you need some of these guys to be goal scorers. You need some of them to produce the stars need Maverick Bork and Logan Stankoven to to be the guys, right? They 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 have to hit on a few of those. But you can build a really nice team with role players, so to speak, around some of those those guys. And the Dallas Stars have done that here this season. You have your Robertsons and, and your Rope Hints and your and your Harleys and Miros, and they put around them players like Craig Smith and, and Radic Foxa. That's are being elevated because they're put in certain situations that allows them to succeed. So I think the the stars continue to find ways to develop some of these guys. Um, they haven't been the best at, at really developing defensemen in, in a lot of years. <laughs> I, I, I think that's um, um, fair to say, but look, Liam Bischel, uh, he looks like he's, he's going to be really, really good. We talked about him last week and uh, who knows what else is is coming down the line stars I'll be honest look pretty good right now with, with Harley and Haskinen you would love to see maybe Chris Tanev has the ability to come back next year um who knows we'll, we'll talk about that when we get there of course but uh Bork and Bluebell have had really really phenomenal season uh, seasons and the insane part about it, this is, is Logan Stanikov is still the third highest scorer on the stars <laughs> with 57 points. <laughs> That's how much of a, a tear he went on um, during, uh, during his stint uh, in the American Hockey League. And look, I'll, I'll be wrong on this one. I, I mentioned he should stay down there, play a full year, get the experience. Look, I was wrong. I can be honest about that. He should have been up a lot earlier. <laughs> maybe, maybe the stars wouldn't have had to gone through some of those uh, those struggles they had um, in February. Anyway, some good stuff from the the Texas Stars. Uh, we'll, we'll continue to to keep an eye on them as, as their playoffs roll around. But of course, we're we're full steam ahead for the for the big club, the Dallas Stars Central Division champs. We'll, we'll find out some more tomorrow, and of course Wednesday on if the Stars win the Western Conference, and then by then we will know the first round opponent as well. And really, really excited to preview whatever series that's going to be. Give my predictions and. Um, and then we're, then we're off. We're off. It's, it, it's finally here. The energy's palpable at this time of the season. And I'm sure many of you, um, feel the same way. So hop on board for those of you that maybe have just joined the show. Really, really appreciate it. We're happy to have you. Please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Never miss an episode. Plenty of great content coming your way for the playoffs. I'm ready to, to rock and roll. So that'll do it for today's episode of Locked on Stars. I hope it was a phenomenal Monday episode for yourself. I hope you're off to a wonderful start to your week as well. Don't worry. Stanley Cup playoff hockey is right around the corner. If it's been a, if it's been a, a tough day already, Got a case of the Mondays. Just, just realize we're all going to have peace over the weekend, plopping up, watching Dallas Stars hockey, and it will all be better. So that'll do it for today's episode. You can follow me on Twitter, JoyTheJet19. Follow Locked on Stars on Twitter as well. Just one more game, the regular season finale on Wednesday night. Have a great rest of your day, and we'll see you tomorrow. So long, Stars fans.